Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott. Hey, yo. Is that a Charger product? It's gonna be Jeff. The cream will rise to the top for oh, yeah. And you're listening to all of the great action figures from our good friends at Hasbro. The fully postable. Have your own WrestleMania with all your favorite figures. Wrestling figure. They sold separately from LJN. Podcast. And we are the Mount Rushmore of professional <laughs> wrestling. Hey, welcome to episode 289 of the Fully Posable Wrestling Figure Podcast. The longest running episode of Wrestling Figure Podcast going today. My name is Jeff and sitting alongside next to me is my real life brother, not storyline brother, Scott. Scott, say hello. Hello. Scott, what's going on, dude? Well, it is a sweltering 168 degrees outside with no breeze. Literally melted when I walked outside of work. Of course, I'm exaggerating because I didn't literally melt. And it's not 168. It's more like, yeah, I don't know, 102. And uh, yeah, on the walk to my car, I started sweating. It was horrible. I thought it was a 100 degrees difference between where you're at and where I'm at. Dude, it might be. Oh, okay. Because yeah, I think it's like 68 over here. Oh, oh is it down to 60? Lucky. You're right on the water too. Yeah. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. It, yes. Well, today is one of those days I would much rather be in your neck of the woods. But anyway... Miami Cola Bang. Awesome. Love it. And I'm still on that San Diego Comic-Con hangover. It's like when you open up all your presents on Christmas morning and you start playing with all of them. And then you kind of hit like 11 a.m. And you just you kind of have like that Christmas gift hangover where you're just kind of tired. And oh, maybe I want to go take a nap from all the excitement. You just kind of wear yourself out. That's kind of where I'm at after Comic-Con. I just want to take a nap, period. That's... <laughs> we don't need Comic-Con for wanting to take a nap. Right. I don't need San Diego Comic-Con. I need a nap. Yeah, especially at our advanced age. You know, we right, really right. enjoy our nap time. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of that San Diego Comic-Con hangover and kind of watching closely to that uh, the crowdfund Mattel gimmick with the ring and the diesel and kind of watching how that's going. But yeah, aside from that, everything is good. Although I did have kind of a curveball question for you this week. Ooh, you're kicking off the show with a curveball at me? Yeah, we're going to uh, pull back the curtain on Jeffrey Toon a little bit. Oh boy. <laughs> What's up? So, everybody has like a guilty pleasure when it comes to music, right? Like, if somebody were to look at your Spotify playlist or whatever you use to stream your music on, if somebody were to look at not just your playlists, but like your recently listened to or your mm -hmm. most listened to, Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not something you want people to see. It's not going to be as bad as like your browser history, especially you, Jeff. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Dude, you sure are into horses. But <laughs> everybody has that one that like maybe you don't want people to see, right? Like if you have your thing on shuffle and you turn on the car and you have a passenger, you probably don't want it coming on the radio because you might get embarrassed. Okay. What's your guilty pleasure in music, Jeffrey Toon? Uh, I think I told you this the other night when we were hanging out. I love covers. That's not a guilty pleasure. It, it, well, that's the thing is there are some bands that we would sit here and laugh at that do cover songs. And you're just like, oh, that was an excellent cover. Like this band sucks, but man, that was a great cover. But that gives you an out. That gives you an out because it comes on the radio and you have a passenger in your car. Right. You're not going to be super embarrassed because you can be like, oh, I hate this band, but the cover's good. No, no, I'm talking like it's going to be a song from their regular library, and when it hits, you're going to turn red in the face. Well, I mean, I've admitted on the show numerous times that I was into the band Nelson back in the day, so okay. I guess I guess that can't be a guilty pleasure. Um, that's a great question, dude. Like, What may be embarrassing, other people may find different or kind of laugh at me. I may find normal. It's kind of touch and go. It depends, dude. Okay, but I'm talking about like one of your buddies. One of your buddies is sitting next to you. You guys have the same interest in music. And it could be male or female sitting next to you. It doesn't matter. Same interest in music, but your buddies, so you can kind of rip each other a little bit. What is your guilty pleasure that you listen to where like somebody that is your friend that has the same interest would look at you and be like, dude, really? Okay, I do have one Machine Gun Kelly song on my 
uh, iPod. Would oh. that consider? Okay, yeah, there you go. That's out of the norm from what you would normally listen to. So do you remember back in 2012 at WrestleMania when he did his performance? Yes. I downloaded that song back in 2012. Just my lazy ass has never deleted it from my library. So <laughs> technically it's still on there. Like if you shuffle it, it could come up. Yes, absolutely. Gotcha. Okay. So, okay. Since you're posing the question to me, is there one that came up to you? No, this was your curveball question. So now okay. we can move on with the balance of the show. And <laughs> Wait, it it's is. not balanced. You haven't answered yours. I don't need to answer it. That was your curveball question, not mine. Scott, I have a curveball question for you. <laughs> Shocking. What is that one song that is on your Spotify that if somebody was sitting in the passenger seat that came on okay. that you would be embarrassed by? Okay. Well, wow, this is original, Jeff. I hadn't <laughs> really thought about this one. <laughs> yeah. um, I've always admitted, love Justin Timberlake, but I liked him before it was cool for everybody to like him. Like, I didn't like him in NSYNC. I was not an NSYNC fan, but I did love Justin Timberlake when he went on a solo career. And I was okay. open with everybody about it. Like, I love the dude. The, he is super talented. He's amazing. But okay. if I had to do like a current day, like Justin Timberlake type, because I'm a metalhead. That's that's my jam. Love 80s stuff, like Michael Jackson, Prince, and all that. But like current day, I don't like a lot of current day music. But I think Shawn Mendes would be my guilty pleasure with music. Who's that? See? Perfect. <laughs> I don't know who that is. He's like a top 20 guy, like makes poppy songs. Like you'll hear him on the radio. When you hit your 40s, you lose track of top 20, dude. No, totally. But it's one of those guys, like I heard him sing and I was like, well, he's got a really good voice. Like, and I like his songs, but I'm not going out of my way to listen to him. But if he's like on the radio or something, I'm like, oh, cool. I heard he has a mixture of uh, Fergie and Jesus, a voice of... <laughs> No, that's only Dale, dude. Oh, I heard he can play the shit out of the drums. Oh, yeah. Dale plays the shit out of the drums. Right. <laughs> Step Brothers. Yes. Brennan, I apologize, has the voice of Fergie and Jesus. <laughs> no, if I had a, a current day guilty pleasure, um, it would be Shawn Mendes. Back in the 2000s, it was Justin Timberlake. Current day would be Shawn Mendes. Okay. And there is uh, some interesting uh, musical tidbits about Jeff and I. Guilty pleasures. It's funny, dude, because like I'll be sitting there and I'll be I'll have my iPod going and something that may be normal to someone else may be embarrassing to me, but maybe normal to me. But someone else is going to be sitting there looking at me like, really? It's all I have the beholder type thing when it boils back to wrestling figures, right? Like I have Macho Man Slim Jim SDCC figure as the greatest at of number all time. seven. At, I have it as the greatest of all time. You are not here to talk about you. You ranked it at number seven for that one year that it came out, 2019. Yeah, it's dropped on my list. Ugh. Point being, as you said, it's all in the eye of the beholder. That's why when somebody gives an opinion on a figure, you can't be like, you're wrong. Even though with your opinion of Macho Man, you're wrong. But it's all it's all subjective. Everybody's got an opinion on it, and it's all in the eye of the beholder. Totally. For the past two years, you've been telling me I'm wrong on that Macho Man Slim Jim. I said what I said. I stand by it. <laughs> this is the brotherly love between us. It really is. It really if, is. If anybody would like to get any of our shirts, head on over to Pro Wrestling Tees or net. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, Snapchat, and the Book of Faces at Fully Posable. Instagram, Fully Posable, WF. P. If you want to go back and listen to any of our past podcasts, head on over to Podbean. You can go all the way back to episode one, and you can hear us bickering back then as well. <laughs> Stitcher, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Please rate and review on iTunes. You can send us any audio questions, questions, or anything else at all. Send it on over to fullyposablewfp at gmail.com. All right, Scott. You ready for this laundry list of omissions from last week? <laughs> yeah, it is quite a list, actually. It's pretty funny. All right. <clears throat> Number one. Here's the deal. All right, folks. Here's the deal. Omission number one. Scott Irwin was in the WWF and won the Tag Team Championship in 1978 as part of the Lumberjacks. Cool. I was four. I was still swimming around in dad. Yeah, you were. 
<laughs> you were. You weren't even a twinkle in his eye yet. So, uh, Scott Irwin was in WWWF. So, wait. What you're telling me is that there's a chance. God damn it. So, you're telling me there's a chance. Give Scott an inch and he wants ten inches. Whoa. What? Uh, Bray Wyatt's WWE Superstars figure was actually Bray dressed up from a Firefly Funhouse skit. So I guess us not always keeping up with the current product, they that's why we didn't know it. By the way, peek behind the curtain, I got a text message from Ring Skirts and he thought it was Steve Kern as well. <laughs> that's Remco Marks. <laughs> We're like, sweet dude, but where's his bow tie? <laughs> Um, I knew they had reference photos, but I don't remember this. So thank you to GBM for sending over said reference photo. Yeah, for sure. This would be the equivalent of doom in their sweatpants. Not as bad, dude. Not as bad. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We'll see what happens when that figure comes out. Bianca Belair's elite 91 figure. She will be in her rumble gear. I think I said mania gear last week. It was the heat of the moment, dude. It's okay. All right, and the uh, biggest omission from last week was uh, there's not eight laggers, there's three. I'm sorry, what? Um, there isn't eight Jushin Thunder laggers, there's actually three Jushin there's Thunder There's not eight. What? There's only three. What? Jushin Liger exclusives currently on RSC. Oh, there's only three? Okay, all right, cool. I guess there's only three. Got that omission out of the way. <laughs> there are 17 Jushin Liger figures <laughs> currently on RSC for pre-order. So I can laugh at myself. So I'm going to just pull back the curtain. I got a text message from a buddy. He said there are eight Jushin Thunder Liger figures. I thought he meant eight new. I was scrambling to get all the notes tidied up. I didn't do my research. I even verified with him during editing that there was eight. Jushin Thunder Ligers. I thought there was eight new Jushin Thunder Ligers, but there's only three. Uh, yeah. Whoopsie. My bad. Eight is very excessive. Three, not so much. <laughs> That's the funny part, dude, is like, it wasn't like I said four. <laughs> <laughs> I went all the way up to eight, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a spinal tap going all the way up to 11, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally <laughs> totally that's awesome oh jesus christ anyways um yeah there's there's only three some dumbass last week said eight well maybe your source meant that there were eight total liger figures available because they went crazy making ligers there for a while so yeah maybe now there's eight total ligers available right that's what i'm thinking that that's what he meant so that's where the confusion was. Yeah. So anyways, I should have done my research. It happens. It's wrestling figures, you know. But for the record, three Jushin Liger figures. I don't even know if they're still available or not. They might have already sold out. One, two, five. Three, sir. <laughs> Great Monty Python reference for you guys that love Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Okay. All the omissions out of the way. Are we done beating ourselves up? Can we move on? All eight omissions are out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to blame public schools on this one, folks. All eight omissions are out of the way. Scott, did you do any toy spotting? I bought eight Jushin Thunder Liger figures. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I heard that they made eight new ones. <laughs> Uh, no, no toy spotting on my part because I am in super save mode until SummerSlam in Vegas. So my money is on lockdown, but being the amazing super brother that you are, you spent a few shillings and picked me up a Brutus Beefcake Legends and a Big John Stud Legends. And I appreciate that. No problem, man. Uh, so there, speaking of confusion... There was some confusion regarding my target order, and I don't know what happened, but I ended up with two Brutuses, but I didn't get DDP. This actually was a win-win because I didn't really want DDP. I just bought it for the hell of it, and it said because I didn't get my or confirm my order in time or something, which I thought I did. I remember sitting in the driveway confirming 
my order. I didn't get DDP, but I got Brutus, which worked out perfectly because now you have Brutus because you needed a Brutus. Yes, and, to go with the Great Valentine Legends. So it's a win-win. Like, cool, I didn't get DDP. Cool, you got Brutus. Yeah, that I guess it did kind of work out. Like, if you didn't want DDP, I like that DDP figure, but it's right. not my favorite version of DDP. If it was long-haired DDP, that would be a different story, as I'm sure it would be for you too, especially right. if they put the big gold belt with them. But that figure was an easy pass for me, so I'm glad it worked out for you, and thank you for the Brutus, and... Thank you for that John Studd figure. Well, we've got to thank Steve from PPW for that. Yes, uh, good point. Steve hit at the right time at his target, and they had some John Studs. So thank you, Steve, for th always thinking of us. We are his favorites. Yes, for sure. And he does great impersonations of us, too. Uh, no, he does great impersonations of old man Brett. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. Well, he also does a great impersonation of us, too. Absolutely. We should just have him run our show and just have him do voices back and forth. <laughs> like, okay, Steve, what would I say here? That's our week off right there is Steve just doing the voices back and forth. I would love that. We should like <laughs> put that in the can. All right. We need to make this happen. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I've got some trip, some work trips coming up. So uh, we may need this. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, Scott, we do have some news. So what do you say we jump into it? Let's go talk about it. Oh, you going to learn today. In the news, we'll start off with Chella Toys. Six inch Sabu figure is coming. They showed out the grayed out rendering. Chella Toys did, I should say. So Sabu will be coming in the six inch line, Scott. That's awesome. More ECW guys, please. Yeah, a lot of people crave those ECW characters. Oh, for sure. Also, sticking with Chella, in their biggest news, King Haku will be coming in their retro style figures. Chella said in their tweet, the king is back and better than ever. It's an honor to announce the signing and concept art for the baddest man in pro wrestling, Haku. Haku is going to be part of our wrestling Megastar Series 2 lineup. Nobody is safe from the tongue and death grip. Excellent, excellent get for them right there. He'll have the purple tights on, as I had said earlier, with the crown on the right quad area. You can see the concept art if you go to ch at Chella Toys on Twitter. So great get for those guys right there. Yeah, for sure. And for those that just want like Hasbro year era figures... He's going to fit right in. He was teamed up with Andre at WrestleMania 6. So there you go. That's that's a great get for them. Great looking sculpt on him. Or I should say a great looking rendering of what the figure is going to be. Moving along. Now we got a tweet from, I can't even say this, Rugoro Studio? Sounds right. They sent out a tweet. They have a series coming out called Ringside Chaos Series one and this tweet showed four pictures actually i should say three pictures showed a security guard with a black shirt black pants there was another security guard with yellow shirt black pants and a referee in this tweet it said finally get to talk about the great project i was asked to be a part of with square at squared circle and j did initial concept art for these sculpts of wrestling personnel and staff figures can't express how cool it is to see my concept become fully realized. Stay tuned. Referee will have extra hands. He'll be in the blue shirt with a bow tie. Security guard will have hat. Walkie talkie. The other guy will have a clipboard. So yeah, anyways, these will be great playset accessories for you guys. For sure. And for figure photographers that are trying to fill out those play sets for their pictures, these are probably a must have, I would say. All right, Scott, are you ready for Mattel news? I am always ready for Mattel news. And what I like about this is we're still on the Comic-Con hangover, but we're going to get more news anyway. It's like when you sit down to Thanksgiving dinner and you eat two plates, but you know you shouldn't eat any more. But that turkey and that stuffing and those mashed potatoes and that gravy is still staring at you like, uh -huh. you know you don't want to save me till tomorrow. So you eat a third plate. That's what this is. 
You are going to be so full of news by the time we're done. You're going to be stuffed. Hope you're wearing sweats. Are we going to a gentleman's church? <laughs> Can't wear sweats to that place. No sweats, no shorts. What? Y- you know the rules. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to start off with a CNN.com article. It says, Barbie maker says higher prices are coming just in time for the holidays. Shocking. Oh, good. Gas is up and toy prices are going up. Sweet. You can now add toys to the growing list of products that global supply chain woes have made more expensive to produce. Toy maker Mattel, whose brands include Barbie, Hot Wheels, Fisher-Price, and American Girl said in an earnings conference call on Tuesday that it is raising prices in the second half of the year in the run-up to the holiday shopping season, which is the toy industry's most important sales period of the year. Mattel CEO Yanon Kreitz said on the call that the company is, quote, managing through global supply chain challenges, end quote. Blah, blah, blah. You're going to pay more at Christmas. Shocking. Well, Hasbro's already raised their price, so... Yeah. yeah. Again, they always walk in lockstep, right? Yeah. That includes higher production and shipping costs and is choosing to offset those by implementing higher prices for its toys in many of its key markets. The post-pandemic recovery has been stimmied by a confluence of challenges tied to the supply chain, even as consumer demand has rebounded. Businesses across the board are not only struggling to meet the heightened demand by having enough inventory on hand, they are also dealing with a shortage of shipping containers and bottlenecks at the ports that has increased the cost moving products around the world. Actually, we're seeing that out here in the Bay. I don't know if you've seen that, Scott, but we literally have cargo ships just sitting out in the Bay, just waiting to be unloaded. Wow, really? Yep. Oh, wow. I wonder if there's any wrestling figures. Should we jump over on those barges and start checking them out? Let's do it. All right. I'll get my (laughs) flashlight. (laughs) Christ continued, we still foresee continuing supply chain challenges for the rest of the year, Christ said. Of course, there could be still unanticipated supply chain challenges, and it's hard to tell what the future may hold. Mattel's comments come on the heels of rival Hasbro saying it too. will be increasing prices later in the year to, quote, offset the rising cost of freight and commodities we continue to see across the business, end quote. Hasbro, whose brands include Transformers, My Little Pony, and Nerf, told analysts during its earnings call on Monday that it also is trying to work through anticipated port congestion and ongoing ocean shipping constraints that will continue into the second half of the year. CNN continues to go on and say, parents hoping to nab this year's hottest toy might want need to act fast when they become available because of the tighter supply and due to the shortages. So anyways, I just read off basically the important parts. Scott, how does this affect us toy collectors and i'll stop you right there i do know one collector already that has stopped collecting their star wars figures because of the higher prices man it's gonna make you a little more selective right especially if you're a completist this is really gonna put a dent in your wallet and you will notice it but i feel jeff it's only right that we announce to our listeners uh based on this information we may as well go hell go ahead and announce our increased prices of giving you listeners this podcast each and every single week, we have to raise prices. Yeah, we are going from zero dollars and zero cents to listen to zero dollars and zero cents to listen. Uh, zero dollars and zero zero cents. Yes, zero. I'm zero sorry, cents. we had to raise the prices. The prices were needed. The prices had to. It just had to happen. I mean, you do this for six years for free. I mean, you just got to raise the prices. Exactly. I mean, it had to happen at some point, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And, you know, other people are going to raise their prices as well on their podcast. But, I mean, it's just the way it is. Exactly. Sorry, guys. It's part of the inflation that's going on right now. Yes. And instead of you releasing the pod at, like, 9 o'clock in the morning, it may get moved to 9.01. Eh, depending on how my bowels are feeling. Right, right. If you go heavy on the meats on Saturday. Yeah, like at a Brazilian steakhouse? Hell yeah. Lucky. (laughs) All right, Scott, there was two different Q&A slash reveals, I guess you could say. A little bit more info 
on Mattel News that was put out by RSC that was put out on their YouTube channel. So I'll just go down these notes real quick. The Survivor Series Hogan, they had to update the skin tone to reflect the darker tan that Hogan had going in the late 80s. He got a lot of sun, brother. <laughs> Hogan will also have pinless elbows and will be able to have the hand up to the ear. Okay, that's cool. Yep. That is very cool. Big for figure photographers and big for people that just want to display the figure in that pose on their shelf. Very, very cool. Elite 91, along with RVD, Hogan, and Bianca, Steve Bas- Steve Ozer, I should say, in this video, without confirming, basically announced Austin Theory will be part of this lineup. You have to watch the video, but basically he announced it without an annou- without officially announcing it. Bianca, who in the emissions I admitted was from the Rumble, not from Mania, will have removable earrings that you can attach and detach from her ear. What do you think the odds that we get an Elite 2 pack of Sasha and Bianca from their WrestleMania main event this year? I will get into two packs later on. Oh, thank you very much. That's why you're a host extraordinaire. Yep. And that's why I tell everybody that there's eight Jushin Thunder Liger figures. <laughs> Sometimes we exaggerate. Sue us. For the Adam Cole in the camo, Steve actually admitted they were anticipating Adam Cole with the camo winning that fan takeover that was going to be on Amazon, which it did not. So basically, Steve said, well, we've got to get this one in the camo out. So they put him in, I think that was Elite 92 or 93, if I'm not mistaken. I have to go back to my old notes. But anyways, they are getting the one in the camo out because they anticipated the camo winning. Great for the Adam Cole fans. And Adam will also have a new head sculpt. The Elixir Bliss Ultimate will be paired, because they always come in twos, you know, with, quote, someone that is related to her in some way. Hmm. Well, they already did a Fiend. They're doing Burnt Bray Wyatt in an Elite series. We'll see. Randy Orton? No, no. no. So they'll have Alexa where you can pose her on top of Randy Orton, like at that one pay-per-view where the Brazzers logo was up. (laughs) (laughs) What? I'm going to completely leave that one alone. Oh, oh. (laughs) They may not go that route. They can't even do blood, so they may not go that route. Uh, Yeah, that would be uh, that would be shocking if they did. (laughs) <laughs> I think we have a better chance of getting a Scott Hogg or a Scott Hogg Irwin figure. <laughs> Am I going to just name this show Ode to Scott Hogg Irwin? The second time he's been mentioned. You might uh, have to. Might, might as well. The Batista that is coming out will be in the, quote, WWE Ultimate Legends that will be at Target. So we have the Legends line going on. Now we, it looks like we have WWE Ultimate Legends. You got to wonder who else they're thinking about putting in that set. WrestleMania Five Macho Man has to get made at some point, right? It's got to. I mean, that's just, it has to be in the cards. It's got to come out. But they already did a Legends Macho. Uh, yeah, they did. They've done a few. But we have yet to get that robed WrestleMania Five Macho. You got to right. think if they're going to continue with that Ultimate Legends, that's got to be one. It has to be. It makes sense, but I mean, why haven't they done that yet? Yeah, uh, man. But I would love to see Piper go into that. Uh, Mr. Perfect, I think, would be a great ad. Um, Perfect wouldn't be bad. The only reason I'd be hesitant is because Mr. Perfect only... He had different singlets, but at the same time, like, what do you do? Extra heads, I see title? Yeah. Extra hands, I, yeah, I guess. Yeah, extra heads, extra hands, and the IC belt. But and like, a couple of towels. And a but, piece of gum. <laughs> but like Macho that from WrestleMania five, that robe, extra heads, that works. But yeah, absolutely. But Perfect didn't have like a robe or I mean neither did Austin, but he had a vet I don't know. I'm just talking myself through it right now. Maybe an ultimate edition Bobby Heenan. You could go that route. Um I think again, I'll go back to I think they're kinda hesitant on Heenan figures right now. Yeah, you're probably right. Would it be cool if they did a manager in that series though? Ahmed Johnson with extra elbow pads and knee pads and all the accessories that he wore all over himself. He was Ryback before Ryback. 
Exactly, exactly. All the crap on his arms and on his legs. <laughs> he could come with like miscellaneous bandages and whatnot. <laughs> casts Ahmed is long I mean all jokes aside Ahmed is long overdue for a figure oh yeah much agree dude long overdue like say what you will all jokes aside I thought he and we actually did an episode on him on a DWH I thought he was gonna be the guy I really did and I was a huge Ahmed Johnson fan and you know Jax did a few Ahmeds but it's been a long time since we've had an Ahmed figure. I would love to see them do a great Ahmed Johnson figure. Not in an ultimate line or anything like that, but he's well deserving of an elite figure for sure. Oh, wait. Hold on. If he is available to us, we will try to get him out some way. This is new information. Okay. I understand. Thank you. <laughs> that was part of the Steve Ozer interview that uh, RSC did with him. Yeah, and I don't think that's the last time you'll hear that in this bit. <laughs> and last, the build of figures that we talked about last week, those will be starting up in 2022. So the Survivor Series that is going to be coming out later this year's Survivor Series series will not have a build of figure. Those will start up in 2022 with Jimmy Hart in the Rubble Series. And then Child Dominic. Which I still find hilarious. That will be in the SummerSlam series. WrestleMania series will be Vince from WrestleMania 3. Okay, now the Q&A portion. Gentlemen asked, Elite 2 Packs. Steve says that they are slowing down on the Elite 2 Packs. The Rock and Mankind will be the last 2 Pack for a while. He said, however, they will come back strong or in a little while. So, soonish. Okay, well, that kind of answers my question that I asked earlier then. Yep, exactly. I think that that one, Bianca and Sasha, should lead off the next kickoff for the two packs. You know what I would love, dude? And this is just the mark in me right now. I want a Ron Simmons and Vader two pack with the WCW title because we've only gotten that once. True. Vader's robe and mask. I, I, I'm, I can't think of what else Vader wore to the ring that night, but I would love a WCW Ron Simmons Invader 2-pack. I'm all for that. I actually missed out on that Hall of Champions Ron Simmons. It, they never showed up in our area. I never saw them. But I would love that. I would absolutely love that. I wouldn't even mind if they did a Lex Luger and Ron Simmons from their, um, I believe it was a Halloween Havoc they faced each other at. I think you're right. In the two or three fall match. Yeah. Um, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind if it was Luger. But yes, I agree. Ron Simmons in a 2-pack. I would like it even more if it was with Butch Reed as Doom with masks that you could remove or alternate heads with the masks on even better. Uh, hold on. Uh, there are not eight Jushin Thunder Liger figures. Oh, wait, say, <laughs> wrong thing. Sorry. If he is available to us, <laughs> we will get him out in the line. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, Steve did say, and they really harped on this, and I don't blame them. They really needed to. If the ring stage and diesel is successful over at Mattel Creation, this opens up so many doors for so much more. So that's the carrot that they're dangling. Yes. Okay. Well, well done. Because we kind of went off last week. We pitched it pretty hard. We're not sponsored by Mattel. We just love this idea of the crowdfunding, and that's why we want this thing to succeed. I'm I'm thinking maybe don't think of it as just the ring, the backdrop, and diesel. Think of it as the ring, the backdrop, diesel, doink, and the ring skirts. Like, don't just think of the 5,000 number. Think of the 7,000 number. You know what I mean? Because if it's going to get five, why can't it get seven? I don't like where we're at at this moment with 896 people backing it. And that's the number as of about five minutes ago. I, I hope it gets better because we're not even a fifth of the way there yet. And you've got to think that if this thing was going to be close to that 5,000 number, it would have already happened because most of the interest would have been generated when it was announced. But I want to see this thing succeed so bad. And again, we don't have a stake in it. We're not getting anything from Mattel. That's just... I want to see more from Mattel Creations. Did they shoot too high on their first offering? Maybe. 
I mean, maybe they should have gone figures. You know, test the waters a little bit. Go small. But you got to love it when they go big or go home, right? I respect it. And the 250 price tag, if you add in Doink and you add in the extra ring skirts, I think you're at that number. So don't think of it as the three pieces. Think of it as the five. And I think that makes it a little more digestible. And again, think of the aftermarket prices too. If this thing gets funded and people miss out, at some point, they're going to see enough people getting this. They're going to be like, all right, I want it. Charge what you want. You know what I mean? Like if you're one that flips toys, this, is, it seems like a no-brainer to me. And the other thing that a lot of people are kind of scoffing at is that $250 point, price point, I should say. But what people aren't realizing is prices are going up. True. Very true. I just read a whole story from CNN.com that said Mattel CEO basically said prices are going up. I understand a lot of people, this isn't what a lot of people wanted. I, a lot of people don't have that new generation fondness. A lot of people, were, when this thing got out, a lot of people were like, oh, I wanted the WCW Nitro set. I wanted the Attitude Era set. I wanted this. I wanted, I didn't want a new generation. Okay, think of it this way. If you back this, not only are you backing the diesel, the ring, and the light-up stage, you're also setting every collector up and helping every collector out with possibilities down the road. You guys want a barbershop? Guess what's on the table now? You guys want a snake pit? Guess what's on the table now? All this stuff is now available to us if we can just start off on the right foot. If we can back this. And I'm, I want this backed. I want to get that ring. I think the ring is beautiful. I love the flashing LED lights. I, the Diesel Ultimate, that's, as of right now, this is the only chance of us getting a Kevin Nash slash Diesel Ultimate. So there's so much more to this. There, it's just, you can't just look at it and go, oh, I'm getting a stupid ring with a new generation stage that I didn't have any connection to and a Diesel Ultimate. Okay, that's fine. But if you have the means, like Scott said last week, if you have the means, you're not only are you backing this, guess what's opened up? to us later on down the road so if you guys want more if you want that wcw nitro stage if you want that attitude era stage if you want the barbershop if you want the snake pit if you want the funeral parlor guess what it's all on the table now yeah <laughs> i couldn't have said it better myself dude you're kind of opening up the door for the future of what could be like we've always made these claims that oh it'd be cool if we had this it would be cool if we had that well Here's your opportunity. And it's not like you're getting crap for your 250. That's that ring other, yeah. is sweet. That's That LED light-up um, stage set is awesome. The diesel ultimate, awesome. The doink is great. The ring skirts are cool. That whole package for 250 as Jeff said, with prices going up, I think it's fair. And you're funding the future of more Mattel crowdfunding projects in their WWE line. And I think that that's great. Because like you said, Jeff, literally everything is now on the table to be considered. Because if you guys fund this, they're going to be way more open to maybe going off the cuff a little bit and being like, you know what, let's give them a funeral parlor, see if they want it. Yeah. And I think that would be great. But could you imagine getting a barbershop play set? Oh, that dude. would be the ultimate. It's something we've always clamored for as fans, and it's never been done. There have been some custom ones, but there's never been an official barbershop play set. I mean, the breakaway window alone, the exploding can of shaving cream for Sid. <laughs> incredible <laughs> uh moving ha huh, where did that come from huh. <laughs> shout out uh what movie was that scott quick uh, that was Step Brothers. no oh no, no i'm sorry that was old school old school thank you yes moving along will there be a combination of legend and current wwe superstars in the newly revealed wwe rich retros steve said that they will be focusing solely on legendary talent it doesn't mean you won't see current talent later but they are focusing on legendary talent to fill out the collection. Steve said that he would also love to see a redecoed ring as well. So that may be something else that they throw on the table. I love it. I love that they're doing that. Definitely keep it to the legends. And then if the line continues, throw in current day superstars. But I think that this was tailor made for those guys from the Hasbro era, or even as they're doing with series one, dipping all the way back to WrestleMania one. Yep. 
is there a chance for NXT line, another NXT line? He says, nothing current in the pipeline. There will be more NXT talent in Elite. Uh, question, why haven't we seen Asuka with the entrance coach yet? Bill was very blunt. And Bill says, because it's a very expensive item to produce. So make it an ultimate edition and only put the coat with her. We don't need all the extra hands and heads. Just give us Asuka. Give us the coat. For display purposes, amazing. Give us the mask. Give us the coat. Boom. Uh, you know, though, the mask, I wouldn't say is mandatory because we have other masks from other Asuka figures that have come out. So if it literally comes down to cost and they can only give us the coat, I'd be okay with that. You're right. A mask makes more sense to include. But if they can't because of cost, Asuka with the coat would be just fine. If the Reckon line continues, could we possibly see additional vehicles like Limo, Eddie's Lowrider, or even a forklift? Bill said Mattel likes making products that people buy, and people seem to like the Reckon toys. So he didn't answer the specifics of the Eddie's Lowrider, forklift, or Limo. What are the odds that we get a real exploding McMahon limousine? No, dude, I need that boat from that uh, WCW promo. Oh my goodness. Where Bulldog and Sting were on the beach and yes. then like Sid and Vader came up and there was an exploding boat and it it was cool. And there was a little person somehow thrown into that, that mix as well, I think. Dude, WCW was making some off the wall little shorts at that time. <laughs> what were they on? <laughs> I don't know. With many lines coming and going, does the UE have a potential end or will it continue as a main line? Steve said anything could happen down the road, but there is no end in sight for the Ultimate Editions. Great news right there. And why would there be? They're constantly selling out. They're As soon as they're released, they're gone. As we've seen with the Hogan and Jeff Hardy Amazon exclusives, their popularity rivals the Elite Series. And it might be the most popular line Mattel has, to be honest with you. It's very hard to find at retail. The online exclusives sell out immediately. They're having a lot of success with this. Absolutely. Yeah, There's no. there should not be an end in sight. Well, and you said it earlier. They're going to do a Legends line in their Ultimates. Yep. So, man, keep it going. Higher price point. So, for me and my budget, I have to be selective as to which ones I purchase. But... If the budget continues to crunch, I may end up just doing Ultimate Editions entirely. It'll be Legends and Ultimate Editions or a combination of the two. Are you planning anything special for Elite 100? Steve said, yes. Oh, that was it? Just yes? No yes. clues? or Just yes? Nope. nope, just yes. Wow, not showing his cards at all. And there was a couple times during this that they said... Uh, they have stuff planned out for years to come. So I'm thinking there's a contract in place. It just hasn't, the I's haven't been dotted, T's haven't been crossed. But they keep talking like things are happening later into 2022 and 2023, plural years. Or maybe they're just gonna, not going to announce it at all. Maybe it's no. just going to happen and they move on with their lives and we don't know any better. Usually those contracts are uh, lent out to the public uh, for stocks and all that stuff. So it's got to be made public. Okay, interesting. Man, there's got to be news soon then. That's what I'm thinking. As you said, it should have probably happened at uh, the Comic-Con reveals, but whatever. Again, just keep it going with Mattel, please. Yep. Uh, somebody asked, some people have had challenges and difficulties getting Elite figures exclusives to Target, Walmart, and Amazon. Will these figures be easier to get in the future? Steve said, yes, it will get easier. But if you look back over the past few years, Mattel has made it easier to find through various outlets or through the retailers. They are taking everybody's feedback and do feel our pain. But Mattel feels that they are in a better place than they were a few years ago. Well, that's good. You definitely don't hear us griping as much about distribution issues. So I think Mattel's definitely addressed that. But the exclusives definitely have been an issue so it's good to see that mattel's listening distribution issues have now turned into pre-order issues dude <laughs> yes but i don't think that that's so much to do maybe with mattel as it is the retailers correct correct so basically what this guy did the host of the q a what he did is he threw out some names and he basically wanted steve to answer yes or no or if these people are lined up for names later on 
Luna Vachon, Steve said, I wish. Jacqueline, he said, I wish. Ivory, he said, I wish. Big Daddy V, he didn't answer. But he says, everyone you want, I want. We will continue to ask WWE to sign people. Well, you got to think Big Daddy V has to be on the table, right? Because they did Mabel. Right. So. And didn't they do one other? Yeah, it was Viscera. Viscera. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so they've done a couple versions of him. So as long as they've still got him under the deal. But that was about a year or two ago. Yeah, something like that. So I don't know that they still have the license to do him. Hopefully they do. But I love the suggestion for Luna. Another one, as we mentioned with Ahmed, long overdue for a figure. Don't listen to Jeff talk about Jushin Thunder Liger figures. All eight of them? Yes. <laughs> Done and done. <laughs> Scott, that rounds out the news. We are going to round out the show with WWE Elite Series 21. Listeners, we will get to you guys next week. We apologize. We're not ignoring you. We just you got inundated with news, and we got to get this out to be as accurate as possible. Sometimes that doesn't happen, but we try. Uh, we try our best. We, yes. give, we give a D-plus effort. We give at least 68%. Yes. That's passing still. In high school it was at least. It is, and it's good enough. Yep. That's how I passed algebra. True story. Scott, are you ready for a nostalgia segment? Let's go talk about it. Before we get into WWE Elite Series 21, we want everybody to head on over to Wrestling Figure Database, a great website that we utilize to look up these figures for each and every individual series and for each individual figure. So we want you guys to follow along, look at the figures as Scott reads down the list. Head on over to Wrestling Figure Database. Dot com. Dylan, we appreciate you over there. Sorry I didn't get back to you about the Jushin Thunder Liger question. Now you know. <laughs> also, I was been bitching to Scott about work this past week, so I'm not even going into that. Anyways, but what we want you guys to do is go to Wrestling Figure Database and follow along on WWE Elite Series 21. Scott, WWE Elite Series 21, go for it. Uh, quick question. Does Wrestling Figure Database have pictures of all eight Jushin Ligers or just three of them? <laughs> well, that's how I realized that there wasn't eight. So, uh, <laughs> Dylan, yeah. you actually caught my mistake. And the guy I went to was like, no, there's only three new ones. I was like, what? You must have been so embarrassed. I still am. And guess what? Life moves on. Exactly. So, Scott, what you got for WWE Elite Series 21? Yes, sir. Mattel, WWE Elite Series 21 consisted of AJ Lee. No accessories, but she was packaged in her green plaid gear. And she was rocking those black and white Converse, which I thought was a great touch on that figure. Next up, Ryback. And he was in his black singlet with white and blue skeleton accents. And Ryback was packaged with a shirt and dumbbell weight accessories. Randy Orton, and I believe the 35th elite offering of Randy Orton in Series 21. <laughs> he came with a gray Orton shirt and was in his black gear. Next up, Alberto Del Rio. He was packaged with a white and black scarf accessory with AR on the scarf. Those were two separate scarves, by the way, white and black. And an Alberto Money magazine. Next up, Rey Mysterio. In his 67th offering of an elite figure in Series 21, <laughs> was packaged in his red and blue gear and came with a t-shirt accessory. And last but certainly not least, the Honky Tonky Man. He was in his red jumpsuit with a guitar accessory and Jeff, that rounds out Mattel WWE Elite Series 21. So for armbar figs, the Ray looked good this wasn't one of the better rays of the ones that they have released in the past 
but it was still good. It was a toyetic figure. This series, though, however, was two people saved this series. AJ Lee, because this was her first elite, and the Honky Tonky Man, because that red jumpsuit and that guitar was amazing. Couldn't agree more. You you totally nailed it. Could have done without Ryback. We've already had a few Randy Ortons. Uh, a ton of Rey Mysterio. Again, they're always great. Every time they put out a Rey Mysterio, Mattel has a hard time screwing Rey up, which is great for the Rey Mysterio fans. Um, Alberto, another Alberto Elite. Kind of feel about him the way I feel about Randy Orton. They've done him so many times in the Elite Series already. Uh, but I agree with you, Jeff, 100%. AJ and Honky Tonk Man are the total stars of this series, which overall I would say is underwhelming. Yeah, uh, very much so. Not the greatest series. I will say this. For those of you that do follow along on Wrestling Figure Database, pay attention to the Rey Mysterio shirt because that comes up a couple series later. Just a little spoiler alert. The Honky Tonk Man was the best figure in this series, hands down. That red jumpsuit was amazing. And up until the, oh, what series was that? That was that GameStop, Scott, came in the retro. Oh, the Retro Fest. Retro Fest. Up until that Retro Fest figure, this was the greatest Honky Tonk Man ever made. Oh, man. I don't know. Jack's Classic had some doozies of a Honky Tonk Man, dude. True, true outstanding honkies that i agree with you but this one was just so good in fact it was so good i never found it anywhere it was hard to find i i don't know if it was short packed or not i don't know what the case allotments were on the honky tonk man but amazing figure you're absolutely right have there been many bad honky tonk man figures i i'm gonna throw out that jack's manager series that came out in like 97 oh yeah Ugh. I, it was what it was right Right. But uh, kind of moving that one aside, uh, maybe his LJN wasn't fantastic. It was okay. I liked his LJN, dude. And I know you weren't a fan of having the entrance gear on the guy. That's what kind of killed it for me, yeah. I, but if you look at that figure overall, it was still really good. Except when the paint rubbed off and he was blue underneath. Yes, the nose or the uh, paint on the nose came off yes. pretty easily um i do agree with you that but it's still a good figure it's good and you could do his finishing move with him yep he had the arms posed just right uh throwing out the jacks one the the manager series one i would say the ljn is probably his worst i loved his hasbro his hasbro was great i loved all of his jacks classics i'll just say that there isn't outside of the jacks one there isn't a bad Honky Tonk Man. Okay, I would agree. I'll just say that LJN is my least favorite. Okay. Out of all the Honkies. Not that it's bad, but it's my least favorite. But I will agree with you that this red jumpsuit Honky is incredible. Very, and very well made. And like you said, the best one up until the blue Retro Fest outfit. And Scott, before we get into the eBay listings, we owe an omission. Another one. I mean, this is the eighth one already. We didn't We're on do... fire. I know, right? We suck. All right. We did not do a who did it better for Paul Orndorff. Oh, you know, that didn't even cross my mind. I was so focused on paying tribute to him that I completely forgot to do a who did it better. I hate that that segment is synonymous with wrestlers passing. I really do. I, I do too. I do too. But it's tradition. We always do a who did it better of the wrestler that just passed away. You're right. We we screwed up. We should have done it. But again, I personally was so focused on paying tribute that I completely blanked on who did the best Paul Orndor figure. So, man. Well, first off, who was your favorite out of this assortment? It was Honky Tonk Man? Honky Tonk Man, yep. Okay. I'm going to agree with you, but a very close second, and pretty much everybody else is like a distant third through sixth, uh, would be AJ. I think the AJ figure is great. It's weird that it doesn't have an accessory. That bugs me with elites, but the figure is so well done, they get a pass on that. But now let's get to Mr. Wonderful Figures. 
LJN. Yeah, no Hasbros. Nope, no Hasbros, no WCW figures, nothing like that. Nothing up until Jack's Classic. Yeah, and no Galoobs, right? He could have technically been done. Uh, no, because he got to WCW like in 92, 93, right? He was in Sting's Dudes with Attitude, so I thought he was there in like 91. Did he get there in 91? I thought so. 90, 91? He would have been part of the UK versions, right? He could have been released in the UKs, yeah, but they never had him in Galoobs. Uh, pretty decorated guy in WCW. He mm-hmm. won the tag team titles a couple times, but he was not in the OSFTMs. Nope. That would have been, I guess, past Mr. Wonderful's time in WCW. Uh, but yeah, then we had to wait until Jack's Classic Superstars to get him, and they did a few versions of him. I yep. think the best would have been his single-carded one. Yep. And moving on to Mattel, they've done a basic of Orndorff. They also did him in a blue robe. Yes, they did. So this is all off the top of our heads. If we're missing one, it's our fault for not referencing Wrestling Figure Database right now, but we're just doing this all off the top of our head. But yes, they did have the basic. They did have the Paul Orndorff in the blue robe. And that basic is so great, too. He's in his white trunks. It's fantastic. And it's exactly what the name says. It's a basic. But it's anything but basic. Amazing sculpt job, no accessories, but it doesn't need it. It's Orndorff ready to kick ass in the ring and pile drive everyone. In his white gear. In his white gear. And we didn't get Mr. Wonderful in his white gear very often. Nope. Which I think that's what kind of puts that figure over the top for me a little bit. The Legends, it's good. It's good. But Mm -hmm. I think his basic is my favorite. I think so too. Although I will admit any kid back in the day that made Paul Orndorff their champion in LJN, I didn't blame you one bit because that was a well-sculpted gentleman. He was ripped, shredded. That was a great-looking figure. He could have beat the crap out of He-Man. But if you look, the face was okay. You know, the the pose was decent. The height was ridiculous. It was ridiculous, dude. (laughs) But I have to agree with you. The basic is fantastic. I love that basic for that basic to well be basic and be that well done. It's fantastic. Yeah. Mattel should be apologizing for how good that figure is. Like, we're sorry guys. This should have been an elite, not a basic, (laughs) but we got spoiled and we got an elite figure as a basic. So that was a quick impromptu. Who did it better? Paul Orndorff. I couldn't believe we've forgotten about that. I just happened to think about that the other day. I saw a picture of Paul Orndorff on Instagram and I was reading over something that they, you know, somebody wrote something about him and stuff like that. And I was like, oh my God, we did not do who did it better. Paul Orndorff. Yeah. And no excuses. Right. No excuses. I was just so focused on paying tribute to the man. And if I can get an early plug out of the way, Jeff, we're getting ready to record the next batch of Drunk Wrestling History episodes. Mm -hmm. And we're doing an entire episode on Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff. And if you listen to Drunk Wrestling History at all, you know we're mostly cracking jokes and laughing. This is going to be one of our more serious episodes. Like we are going to do the man justice. Mr. Wonderful, an absolute legend of WWF, a huge part of a lot of our childhoods. And we're we're going to pay proper homage to the man. And I, I think it's very well deserved. By the time it drops, we'll be about a month removed from his passing. But it just seems like with all these wrestlers passing, we kind of gloss over them, right? We kind of forget, oh yeah, so-and-so passed away. So it'll be nice to have that reminder in a month that, hey, Mr. Wonderful passed away. Let's put him in our thoughts today. And pay homage to him again, because that man is a legend. Hall of Famer, one of the best of all time. He absolutely deserves it. Absolutely. And Scott, we're going to move over to the eBay sold listings for each of these individual figures. For AJ Lee, last sold, July 25th, sold for $53. Ryback, last sold listing July 24th for $33.99. Randy Orton, He did not have any carded listings. Last sold listing was July 3rd, $23.56. Alberto Del Rio, last eBay sold listing, July 12th for $34. Rey Mysterio, last sold listing, 
was on July 5th for $74.99. And the Honky Tonk Man last sold listing mint on card July 1st, $80. Wow. That sounds about right, though. It's an amazing Honky Tonk figure. I thought it would be a little bit higher. But maybe since we got in the Retro Fest figure, maybe this one dropped in price or something. Possibly, yeah. That had something to do with it, I'm sure. So, Scott, that rounds out the show. As, as I said, next week we will get back to the listeners. But for this week, that is it. We want everybody to check out WrestlingToyTracker.com where you can check out the card and loose prices of LJN's, Galoobs, Hasbro's, Just Toys, Bendoms, Defining Moments, and Retros. If you're in the hunt for any of those figures, use Wrestling Toy Tracker as a tool to reference the prices and see if you're getting a fair price as well. So check out WrestlingToyTracker.com. And usually I start off with Breaker and Bane, and you guys always know Breaker and Bane's Power Hour, where they talk movies, they talk wrestling, they talk a bunch of stuff. But... I'm going to put over the TB Toycast, Travis and Breaker Toycast. I was on there earlier today, Scott, right before we recorded. Oh, you're two-timing me. I see. Oh, I always two-time you, dude. That's okay. I'm yeah. used to it. Oh, that's okay. He couldn't leave his little brothers behind. <laughs> Literally. When I talked to Breaker and Travis, it was about the Simpsons Playmates figures. You loved those. Oh, my God, dude. I did. And so uh, just talking to them, I fell in love with them even more. I'm not going to go back and uh, maybe p pick up a couple because they're so cheap to go back and pick up. The Halloween ones too? No, I don't like the Halloween episodes. I never liked the Simpsons Halloween stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Christmas set was awesome though. Christmas was great. Uh, the play sets in general were great. Yes. Like the one that came with Mayor Quimby. Fantastic. <laughs> yes, dude. Totally. <laughs> Those are some great figures. Uh, by the way, yeah. my sister-in-law... Christy, she has a ton of those, and I believe she wants to part with them. So they're all packaged. They've all been taken care of. Like, they're in pristine condition. So if anybody's interested in purchasing, I guess let me know, because she has a ton of them. Um, I might know somebody. The only bad thing is, is they're in another country. Another country? Yes, they're up north in Canada. Oof. Okay. Um, I mean, I could at least put them in touch if the person is interested. So. Okay. All right. I'll t I'll send the message to uh to the guy. Okay, and then let me know. You have my information, so let me know. <laughs> I do. It's like we're brothers or something. Almost. Check out Doing the Favor podcast. Excuse UPCs over at doingthefavor.com. And while you're over there, check out Eric and Barry talking wrestling, wrestling figures, sports. They got it all over there at doingthefavor.com and check out their show on iTunes as well. Positively Pro Wrestling Podcast. While I've been talking, Steve from PPW just sent me an inappropriate text. He did? Can you share it with the audience? Nope. Okay. I'm going to just leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Show me when we stop recording. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> but we do want to thank Steve for the John Studs too. Uh, he was dressed in the text message, right? John Stud, yes. Not John Studd, Steve. It wasn't Steve. It wasn't a picture of Steve. It's something else. I'll have to show you after the show. Oh, then never mind. I don't want to see it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So check out Positively Pro Wrestling Podcast. Our friends Marco, Seth, and Sheena have a fun, fun, not only podcast on, that you can find on iTunes, but also a fun Facebook group as well. Check out the Chick Foley Show on Facebook. Justin, I've missed you, man. I've missed your questions. But Ditto. I enjoy listening to Wrestling Cheers and listening to you talk. So I get my weekly dose of Justin there when we are not able to get to your questions. But I want everybody to check out Wrestling Cheers. Check out our buddy RJ over at Ringside Rant. Marty and Rucker do a fun show over at Boot to the Face. Tim, Tim, we do have a question from you. We'll get that, that in next week over at Pulling Up a Chair. Scott, you've already talked about Drunk Wrestling History and Paul Orndorff. Anything else that you want to mention? Uh, give us a follow on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Drunk. Eddie monitors that account and is very responsive. So if you want to hit him up on Twitter, again, Wrestling underscore Drunk. Have a conversation with Eddie. Can't guarantee that he won't be drunk or that he will be drunk, but it's usually pretty interesting. Our most recent episode that dropped this past Friday is all about WrestleMania 14. 
So if you want to hear some jokes and some information about WrestleMania 14, check out our most recent episode wherever you download your podcasts at. Because we're Drunk Wrestling History, where we're not always accurate, but we are always drunk. Also, check out our good buddies, Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling, and every single day, Ryan Buds does trivia with Buds. And if you're in Tennessee, see if he's doing any live trivia around you, so check him out on Facebook as well, Ryan Buds. Scott, roll call. Yes, I want you guys to head over to doyledraws.com. That's D-O-Y-L-E draws.com, where the amazing, the super talented Jason Wolf has his artwork and other items up for sale, or you can get in touch with the man himself, get a commission. He does amazing artwork. If you need art of any type, Jason is your guy. Head over to doyledraws.com and get in touch with the man himself. Get yourself some artwork. And Jeff, that rounds out roll call. Oh, but I do have a question about next week. Okay, what's up? Is it going to be all omissions and then listener segment? Is that next week's show? <laughs> we probably could, dude. So we'll lead off with how's everything going. We'll throw some stuff in there. And then we'll go into the new segment, which will be all eight Jushin Thunder Liger figures. <laughs> Um, we'll talk about some more omissions. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Listener segment. Yes. 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 And then take it home. Yep. That's exactly it. Sounds like a hell of an episode. I can't wait. Spoiler alert. Everybody knows what they're in for next week. <laughs> episode 300 should just be all omissions. <laughs> like the entire thing. There won't be an introduction. Nothing. It'll just be like, boom, all omissions. It should be every omission from the first 300 episodes. It'll be episode 188 <laughs> and all of the rest of our bloopers. Oh my God. I heard, by the way, I heard uh, Jason Wolf is making eight different uh, Jim the Anvil Nightheart figures. I heard that as well. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. I'm just kidding. I, what am I going to name this episode? Ode to Scott Hogg Irwin or just eight? Volume eight. Vo oh, good Anthrax album. It is. Well, for a couple, except for a couple songs. A couple Highly songs. underrated. Very underrated. Very, yeah, very underrated. And John Bush sang on it, by the way. Just saying. He did. The second best Anthrax singer. No, he's the best. I don't even consider the the dude between John Bush and Bring a Belladonna back an actual singer. Bush so he, might be the seventh best Anthrax singer. And I don't even know if there's been six before him. It's blasphemous. It's what you get. <laughs> Uh, he's the seventh greatest metal singer of all time. Oh, I don't even know if I'd argue that. But Belladonna would be like six. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> 60th, replicating his age. <laughs> oh, brotherly what? love. Uh, what? What? <laughs> so, Scott, for episode 289, anything else? Stay safe, stay healthy, fig life since 2016, and happy toy hunting. I want everybody to go and count all eight Jushin Thunder Liger figures <laughs> that are coming out. <laughs> and I want to thank everyone for listening to episode two, the number eight, Jushin <laughs> Thunder Liger, nine, hashtag big life. Adios. <laughs> Let's go! Jeff and Scott, the Tomb Brothers, busting out the ring. But we don't take it out the box, MOC. Happy toy hunting, we'll see you next week. With the OGs of WFP. Fully poseable, thank you all for listening. It ain't no storyline, real life siblings. So everybody go and do your toy spotting. Hashtag Fig Life, adios from the Kings.